Hey guys, uh, just a quick thought experiment to defend my position um, on functionalism and uh, just to also argue against the hard problem. Okay, so I sneak into Sil's bedroom late at night. I've got this high-tech brain scanner which I put on his head and it scans um, every uh, neuronal disposition, every connection between them, the way that they fire and the way that they operate. I take this high-tech uh, brain scanning back home and I um, upload all the information on a database. So now I've constructed this um, working model of Searle's, um, of Searle's brain. Um, now I put it in a virtual environment, a virtual world, which is functionally, but nothing else, functionally identical. So it will behave in the same way. Um, I would put a virtual version of myself in this world and um, Sil comes up to me and um, says, you know, he thinks he's Sil and he says to me, um, you know, machines will never be conscious and, um, you know, he can say that because he's um, functionally identical, he's behaving in exactly the same way that he would if he wasn't a, a virtual Sil. Um, and you know I have a disagreement I say well it's only the processes which um, are needed to explain what consciousness is and if we could replicate those processes we could replicate consciousness and then he says to me well no you know what about qualia I say well you know there's no such thing as qualia no secondary qualities need exist he says well the redness of red the smell of coffee and I say to him well with with color um, information comes into your sensory input it goes gets passed by the optic nerve to the um, the visual cortex it gets processed some more and passed on higher up the brain function uh, and he says well well no what about this intentionality and I say well the intentional stance is just one that we take um, to make sense of the world I um, is just a construct which was both favored genetically and is culturally reinforced, especially in our particular Western nations. Um, and then he says to me, well, no, well, what about the hard problem? And I say to him, well, there is no hard problem. Once you can um, understand all the processes involved in the brain, um, the processes for empathy, the processes for language and for, um, you know, reasoning, then you can understand what consciousness is and he says no no you've left something out you've left out consciousness but there is no other explanation that we can give him um, this virtual soul whether he's conscious or not thinks that he is so the only way that we can explain what consciousness is is by explaining um, the particular processes that give rise to why it seems that he is conscious. Okay, um, I think I've argued my point there, so if anyone sees any flaws in my argument, yeah, feel free to post back. Peace.